guys, today we're going to be making the R301 from Apex Legends, except this one's going to be a little different than our airsoft versions. So let's get into it. Now anyone who's played Apex knows the R301 is one of the most iconic guns in the game. It's been a fan favorite weapon since day one and four years later a lot of players still love using it. I'm one of those players so I decided I wanted an R301. I got this down at my local gun shop. Uh, it was only like 150 bucks, so not too bad. Uh, about all I could afford, I would love to go bigger with this, but uh, I'm not going to spend more than I have to. So the first thing we need to do is disassemble our 22. Let's go ahead and remove the magazine and make sure the gun is clear. It's important when handling firearms to never assume the chamber is empty. Now this gun is pretty easy to disassemble, we just need to remove the two screws that keep the stock and the frame together. Now we can go ahead and push the frame out of the stock. There we go. Next we can go ahead and take off the sights because they'll just be in the way for the R301. And after definitely not struggling with a front sight, we now have our internals for our R301. Now we can grab our calipers and start taking some measurements. I went ahead and designed this in SolidWorks. It's about 42 different parts, but it'll make our 22 look like an R301. This design took a few weeks, but as I was designing, I went ahead and sent parts to the printer. All of this is printed in PLA Plus on my Bamboo Lab P1P. The amount of time this printer has saved me is incredible. Let's go ahead and lay out all our parts. With all our pieces printed off, there was one last thing we need to do before we can start painting. The front body of the R301 was too large to print off in one piece on my P1P, so I had to split them up and then plastic weld them together. For this process, what I'm doing is using a soldering iron to kind of melt the plastic together. This technique holds 3D printed parts together a lot better than just using glue. After plastic welding, I started filing it down a little bit just to get rid of some of that extra material. I did end up doing a little more sanding to this just because it wasn't as smooth as I would like it to be. After that though, I could start painting. <laughs> base coat we need to go ahead and mask off some spots that we don't want more paint on. For masking I'm using what's called frog tape. It's basically a higher quality masking tape. You get a lot cleaner lines with it and it also pulls off less paint than generic masking tape.
now that we have all our parts masked off, we can go ahead and apply this color shifting paint. Now for one of my favorite parts of making props is removing the masking tape. I did make a mistake on this first part because I didn't give the paint long enough to dry. Now this is a great example of why I love removing masking tape. Seeing this contrast to colors is really the first time you're seeing what your prop will look like painted. Now let's go ahead and remove the rest of this masking tape. With our masking tape removed, we can start assembling the actual gun. I decided first we should start with the adjustable stock. Mandatory boing. I went ahead and made the cheek rest out of TPU instead of PLA plus, and then we're gonna glue that onto the top and that'll lock our tube in. The pad for the back of the stock also got printed in TPU. It's not too much of a difference, but the bit of flex with TPU does add a little bit of comfort. After gluing the TPU pad on, we now have an adjustable stock. Gonna go ahead and fast forward through most of the build process. Uh, we're gonna be here for a while if we sit and watch each part. If you guys wanna see the full build process, let me know down in the comments and I'll make a separate video for it. Unfortunately, my phone died right when I was finishing up, so I charged my phone and it was time to load up the magazine. I designed the dummy mag to attach to the 22 magazine, that way we can just hit the button and take it out. From here, we can also take the 22 magazine off and make it easier to load by hand. We can go ahead and put 10 of these 22 long rifle bullets into our magazine. Made sure we had 10 loaded, and then we could go ahead and put this magazine into our dummy magazine. Now we can go ahead and put both magazines into the gun. With the magazine in, it's time to take it outside and test fire it.
this far. Thank you so much. Uh, this was by far my favorite project that I've ever done. If you guys want to see more projects like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment what kind of projects you'd like to see. Uh, I've already thought of maybe a G7 Scout that shoots 308, um, a Sentinel that shoots 6mm Creedmoor. Uh, I don't know. I think, I think this would be cool projects to do. I'm still working on the Bangalore Tactical. But I see a lot more projects like this in the future. If you guys want to see that, make sure to let me know down in the comments.